when it comes to soap villains, our next guest is uh, pretty much as, as uh, sinister as they get. He certainly is. He's made a life a misery for his wife, Yasmin, isolating her from friends and family, even putting her behind bars. But will Jeff's lies ever unravel? And there he is, talking to Coronation Street star Ian Bartholomew next about Jeff. But first, here's a look back at why he's so creepy. Uh, Ian Bartholomew, who plays Jeff so brilliantly well, joins us now. Ian, congratulations on the on the role and the tension that you bring into everybody's lives, and also for for highlighting. We've had your co-stars on the program, and, and we talk about the highlighting this coercive control situation as well. When you were given the part um, as Jeff, he he was a nice guy to begin with, wasn't he? Yeah, he was everybody's friend. He's Mr. Nice Guy. He's the, the Jeffster, as he likes to call himself. Um, you know, the DJ at the local hospital and uh, an amateur magician. Yeah. Um, the, I, I, I was led to understand that the character would turn dark after a little while. They want, I think they wanted to see what I was doing and whether they thought it would uh, work for a future storyline. And um, they put Yasmin and Jeff together and they decided that they wanted to try to highlight coercive control with an older couple to, to show that it's actually a serial offence. That So Jeff has obviously done it before. And actually listening to that clip, because I can't see it, but listening to the, that clip you just showed, he really is a nasty piece of work, isn't he? I'd forgotten quite, yeah. quite a lot of that. Yeah, but, but do, that... I, do I, and it, but it's why it's been so brilliantly done, that this has happened over such a long time. This is why I think Coronation yeah. Street have done it so perfectly. But you've yeah. seen it all there concentrated. But we know this yeah. has been a drip, drip. And as you said, Jeff was a nice guy when we first met him. He's jovial, everybody loved him. And it's been well, that, so that, subtle, the change, that, hasn't it? Yeah, that's his public persona. He likes to think... He likes everyone to think that he's the good guy, the, the, the fun guy, the guy who, who makes everybody laugh, pays for drinks in the pub. But in private, of course, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And uh, I think the way that the, the, the producers and the storyliners and, and the script writers have uh, um, attempted to show the reality of a situation like this. I think they've done a fantastic job, and, and you're right, to have it as a, as a long drip, drip, drip uh, feed all the way through to make it a long storyline rather than, you know, six or seven weeks and then it's over and you're on to the next. I think that's been a really, really positive uh, part of the storyline and why I think people have invested so much in it. And uh, I think it's helped a lot of people. I, I've been in contact with uh, Women's Aid quite a lot recently. Um, and they've had a lot of calls, and I think a lot of women's charities have, have had a great deal of um, uh, help, ask, uh, have been asked for support a great deal over the last few months, and certainly since lockdown. Yeah, and it has, and I think if any, if it just helps one person, Ian, to, yeah. to recognise that maybe they are in, an, in a similar situation. What about you um, as an mm -hmm. actor? How does that affect you, playing somebody so insidious and so mean? Um, dark. Dark. Dark, oh, he is dark. Um, it's been fascinating. It's not been fun. People, a lot of people say to me, oh, have you enjoyed playing the villain? Well, actually, no. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is that Jeff doesn't see himself as a villain. He's, you know, he's, he's not a well man, plainly. He's not well. There's a disconnect somewhere. Um, but as an acting exercise, purely as an acting exercise, I've never done anything like this before, certainly not over such a long period. And you get the scripts, you don't know what's coming. You, know, you have an idea of what the arc of the storyline is, but until you get a script, you don't know what it is, what you have to interpret and what you have to do with it. So it's been really interesting and exciting to get the new scripts and go, oh, he's doing that now. I mean, some of the stuff was, uh, I, I found quite horrifying when I read it mm. to, to think that I was going to have to do it. But the point is, both the, um, Shelley, who plays Yasmin, and myself realise that it's an important storyline. It's a story that needs to be told. And that's what kept us focused and that what, that's what actually kept us sane. And after all, at the end of the day, we can both walk away from it and go home to our partners and our families. People who live in this situation for real can't. So if you're going to tell a story like this, you've got to do it properly and uh, with a, a great deal of... Um, with integrity, uh, as much as you can muster, you know? Meanwhile, those of us watching at home, we're simply saying, when's he going to be rumbled? How much longer can he be getting away with this? <laughs> well, I can't tell you that, can I? <laughs> Not well, we've got a, a clip um, of tomorrow night, um, and obviously yeah. Alia, 
Ali has been on to him from very early on. Um, yeah. And this is obviously, Yasmin has had a, has a heart attack. She's recovering. And this is Alia telling Jeff what she thinks is the good news. Oh, well, we will see about that. Um, what about you and, and Shelley, Ian? Obviously, you have so many uh, scenes together, very difficult scenes together. Um, friends in real life, you know, we know yes. that when you go out and about, the public don't like a villain. You know, have you ever had the handbag? Attack. No, I haven't, actually. I think that's to do with the fact that I live uh, in quite a remote place outside a small village. And in the village, everybody knows who I am, so they sort of leave me alone. But also, because of where I live um, and because of the restrictions in place now, we're encouraged to drive. I know it's not, uh, it's not ecologically very sound, but we have to drive into work. So literally, I get in my car, I drive to work, I get in my car, I drive home. So I don't really see that many people. I don't use public transport because I can't really, because I can't get to where I need to get to, to work. And um, the storyline really took off during lockdown, so we weren't seeing anybody anyway. Most people, I have to say, have been um, positive and have, have, have focused on the fact that we are telling an important story. And they go, good acting, great acting, well done. It's a really important storyline. And um, sorry, you're such a... You know what? Yeah. You know. What? Just final, final, final point, Ian. Will we ever yeah. see? Will we ever? Are we ever going to be likely to see Elaine again? Um, that is another thing I can't tell you, Eamon. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have to kill you. Don't annoy him. <laughs> oh, Please don't, don't annoy, annoy him. No, 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 no. Well, don't annoy well, him. Well, I'll quit while I'm ahead, you, my friend. Tell me what. If you send me the recipe for the fish burger, I might, um, <laughs> I, I might do that. OK, Ian, OK. It has, it, it, you and, and Shelley have done an extraordinary job, and Sam, and it has been a fascinating storyline, continues to be, um, and we'll continue to watch Coronation Street tomorrow at 7.30. Thank you so much. Love Thanks, Ian. To you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, cheers.